Hey there guys, this is Sam and Justin at the Survival Review and today we're going to be talking about episode 17 of the Return to Twin Peaks. And I know that 17 and 18 premiered together, mm -hmm. but we figured we're going to do them in separate videos since there's so much to talk about in each episode that we don't want to make like one long, like hour long video. Yeah. Might as well just do it in a little separate video so that would be a lot easier and easier to digest. Yeah, and there's obviously a good reason to split it up because the episodes are split up. Yeah. So it's, it, it, it'll work out well. And since this episode, surprisingly enough, probably had the most happening in it than like any other episode of the show, which is kind of surprising. I didn't think it was that surprising because I figured they, they really had to have a lot happen in these last two well, episodes. Well, I mean, it, it's surprising compared to the other episodes that we've had. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, but a whole <laughs> lot <laughs> happens in this episode. Yeah. Uh, this uh. this is one of the one of the most in, insane, intense episodes of the series yes. so far. Well, the episode opens in the hotel room mm -hmm. with Cole and Tammy and Rosenfield. Yep. And Cole's sitting there just holding his gun, just looking at Rosenfield, and going, "I couldn't do it." Yeah. He's like, "I couldn't, I couldn't shoot." And uh, Rosenfield's like, you've gone soft in your old age. <laughs> He's like, not where it counts, buddy. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, oh, cool, cool, you're the best. And, but then uh, he's like, I'm going to tell you something that I've kept a secret from you for 25 years. 25 years ago, Briggs revealed to him that there's this dark spirit called Zhao Dei that over time became Judy, and then something happened to Briggs, and then after that, something happened to Cooper. And then he brings up Philip Jeffries, who's like, I'm investigating this thing, and I'm onto something. And then he disappears, and so now Cooper tells him, look, and this was the last thing Cooper said to him, mm -hmm. um, was, if I disappear like those guys, find me. <laughs> yeah. And then Cole reveals that he got information from his informant, Ray. Yeah, so now we know he's a paid informant. Like, yeah. Okay. Saying that... Uh, this this second Cooper was looking for coordinates from Major Briggs. Yeah. Cole then gets a phone call from the FBI agents in Las Vegas who are in Cooper's hospital room and just missed him. And as they're talking, Dougie's boss comes in and he gets on the phone with him and tells him that he had a message from Dougie saying that he's on his way to see Sheriff Truman. So they realize they know where they have to go. Yes. And then so they're off. Yeah, and now we've got everybody off to Twin Peaks. Yes. Like, we've got them going, we've got Cooper going, mm -hmm. and it's it's all coming together. This is what it's all been leading up to. This yes. is this is the peak. Yes. The, the Twin peak. Peaks. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of going to Twin Peaks, we cut to Doppel Cooper in his car just driving at night, waiting to get there. And while that's happening, we're cutting back to the jail cell, mm -hmm. and you're seeing just the no eyes lady just starting to like make those weird noises again, but it's starting to get a little more intense. Yeah. And also, possibly Billy drunk guy is just sitting in there making weird noises and annoying uh, Chad again, of course. Yes. And James is still like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, James and the British guy, he's just like, oh, I don't know, my... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> yeah. Then we cut to the Great Northern, and you see Ben Horn there. He gets this phone call from this, like, police station out in Wyoming yeah. saying, we had this guy here. We think he's related to you. He might be. He said he saw someone get killed. He was acting kind of weird. And Ben just goes, yeah, yeah that's my brother. It's my brother, Jerry. <laughs> and he's like, is he charged on anything? We're like, oh, no, not yet. He just needs you to come down and, like, pick him up. He's, He's like, like, yeah, okay. I'll make arrangements to get him to get him brought yeah. here. And they're like, can you bring him some clothes, please? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's just like, that's great. Yeah. Oh, it's just great. And cool that it's tying in a bit more. Yeah, than it's coming together still. Jerry Horn is an important character. Some we, never, we never thought from those little scenes when he's just running in fields, yeah. acting ridiculous, that he'd be important, but he is. He is. And then also, like, cuts to the woods of, like, Twin Peaks, and you're like, okay, what's going on here? And Doppel Cooper walks into frame. Yes. And, he's like, and you're like, oh my god, he's here? He's here, yeah. And he's kind of in that area that's close by the Jackrabbit's Palace. Yeah. Um, and he, he goes towards where they were, and there's the puddle, mm -hmm. and what looks like the evolution of the arm or something yeah, like it. That's floating there, and then yeah. he disappears. He's in... Black Lodge, whatever place with the giant. Yeah, but the first thing you see is just catch this wide shot and you see the floating head of Major Briggs. Yes! <laughs> and then you see right next to it is the head of Dava Cooper in a little cage. <laughs> and so the first thing I think is he's been trapped like this was a trick, but then he gets, the cage thing gets pulled up into the same thing that the, the gold orb with, uh, with Laura's face yeah. that pushed her into like the, the screen. He gets pushed into a screen that's like just some wooded area. It kind of pans over and you see he's right in front of 
the sheriff's office. Yes. And then you see Andy just by his car getting a basket out for like a picnic. And he just sees him and goes like, oh, Agent Cooper. And he's like so happy to yeah. see him. And, and our first reaction was like, oh, God. We're no. just like holding on to our seats because yeah. we're like, oh, my God. Yeah. Don't do this. No, like, don't we don't want to see these characters interact. I don't want to see what happens from no. this. Like the last people I wanted to see interact with Dalva Cooper were Andy and Lucy. <laughs> no, they're, they're so innocent and kind. Yeah. And Doppel Cooper is like you don't know if he's just gonna kill them all right on the spot. Yeah. Or what his plan is. Yeah. But he he kind of just goes into the station, asks to talk to to Truman, mm -hmm. and sits down with him. And you see Andy's talking to Lucy. And he's all happy and generally like it's yeah. Agent Cooper, and, and he's then, so happy. But then his face goes blank. Yeah. And he kind of has a flashback to one of the images he saw when he was in the lodge of him like walking Lucy, and it, it was just a weird sort of scene. Yeah. But it's obviously him sort of realizing, oh, this situation is more serious than than I thought. Yeah. And while that's going on, we keep cutting back and forth to the jail cell mm -hmm. and like the noises from the no eye lady is getting more and more intense. And then you see the drunk, the possible Billy guy, kind of just like lean against the cell and just kind of like pass out a bit. Yeah. And when he's passing out, Chad seems like he's taking the opportunity to try to sneak something out of his shoe. I don't quite know why he had to wait until the drunk yeah. was was asleep. I don't fully understand that because James and Freddy are clearly standing up and awake. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. That was one minor little, like, I don't know if I'd say gripe or just yeah. like kind of weird thing. <laughs> yeah, but he takes... Didn't make a ton of sense. Uh, yeah, but he takes a key that was hidden in his shoe out and unlocks the cell and gets out. And again, like you're saying, it's kind of weird. You don't get any reactions from James or anything, or actually where they are in relation to each other. Yeah. You think they would notice him breaking out of the cell, basically, but they don't notice. It's not even that... I, they had to have noticed. They must have just not said anything. Maybe? Or I, I feel like it was just, like, ignored. Because Chad gets his gun, and all this is going on, Andy runs down to the cell, yeah. and right as that happens, they converge, and Chad takes out his gun, he's pointing it at Andy, just, like, calling him names and stuff, just getting ready to shoot him, when he walks past Freddy's cell, and Freddy just punches the door, and it opens up smashing Chad in the face and knocking him out. Yes, which is great. It's like yes. a, a great everybody claps sort of scene. Yeah. It's, it's really awesome. Uh, the only issue I have with it is why didn't they yeah. say anything prior? They, yeah. Just, just a line of one of them going like, hey, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. Would have made it make a little more sense. I don't know. That's a very minor gripe in the grand yeah. scheme of things. So. But Andy takes uh, the no-eye lady and... Uh, James and Freddy and goes upstairs with them. Mm. And while this is going on, Truman and Dapple Cooper are in his office just talking. And again, just, it's just intense. It's just suspenseful because you're just like, what's going to happen? And all of a sudden, Lucy up front gets a phone call and she plays phone and she goes like, who is this? It's like, oh my god. And she transfers the call to Truman saying how important it is. Truman answers it and it's Cooper. Yes. And so the already sort of really awkward conversation between Dapple Cooper and Truman gets a lot more serious because Truman was obviously already really suspicious yeah. of him. He's just like, you're Cooper. Uh, yeah. I see. And it, it, you could tell he kind of knows he's not. And then that's fully confirmed when he gets Coop on the phone. Yeah. And then Coop is just like, I'm almost, I'm pulling into Twin Peaks now into the ceiling. You see the Twin Peaks sign that he drives past. As he's hearing this, Doppel Cooper can sort of see it on Truman's yeah. face that he knows now. And he reaches for his gun is about to shoot. They're both reaching for their guns. Yeah. About to shoot, and a, you hear a gunshot. Doppel Cooper falls to the ground, and it's Lucy. <laughs> Lucy. Lucy shoots him because she she's already so paranoid about phones, as we've established way earlier on, <laughs> yeah. like the second episode or whatever it was. Oh. Um, that paid off. And it, it paid is, off. It it was great. I absolutely love that she's the person that <laughs> yeah. got him. It was amazing. It was so great. Yeah. And then Coop was on the other line and he hears the gunshot and like Truman tells him what happens. Coop just like, don't touch that body. Yeah. Like, don't touch him. I'm on my way. I'm almost there. Make sure there's coffee ready. <laughs> yeah. Make sure the coffee's on. <laughs> yeah. And then everybody converges into that room. Andy with uh, James and Freddy and the Noir lady comes in and Hawk finally shows up and he sees the dead body and he's just like, 
that's Cooper, and you know, Trimmer's just like, no, it's not. All of a sudden, you start to see the hobo ghosts yes. come in and start piling around him and start doing stuff. Just like the first time he died, they're yeah. bringing him back, it seems. Yeah. But that's Coop... not quite what happens. No, because Coop runs into the room, <laughs> yes. sees this happening, and also while this is happening, the Midgen brothers come in. <laughs> Which is great. I love that they're observing all this, because they've seen... Almost none of the really weird stuff. No, and they're they're, they're seeing all this, and they're just what the fuck. Is they're just like? imagine like showing somebody who's never seen Twin Peaks before, like some of the yeah. craziest stuff of the show. That's them because they're just like, what is yeah. going on? It, they're the audience. <laughs> yeah, and it's wonderful. And you see the, the hobo ghost doing their thing, wiping the blood all over his face, and then they start to disappear. And all of a sudden, this like orb starts coming out of Doppel Cooper's yes. chest, and you see. Bob is in the orb. Bob's face is in the orb. So this orb is, is Bob. This is yeah. a pure evil orb. And Coop just goes, he looks at, at Freddy and he goes, are you Freddy? Yes. And he goes, yeah. And this is my destiny. And he and he goes, he kind of goes towards the orb, but then the orb is like attacking him. Yes. It gets into the ground and Freddy forms a fist and punches him <laughs> and, and keeps going at it until he punches him. What looks like it punches him straight to hell. Yeah. <laughs> like, through the ground. A bunch of fire comes up, uh, but that's not the end of it, because no. then it comes back up, attacks him some more, and eventually he gets one really good hit, and it shatters, and all the yes. pieces float up, and he's like, did I do it? <laughs> so that's Freddy's reason for being in this show. That was Freddy's destiny. It's which is to kill Bob. Which is amazing. Yeah. I, yeah. I love that this, probably my favorite new character in the yeah. series, he's just great that he had something that important to do yeah. uh, rather than just kind of being in the background. And while all this is going on, the Mitchum brothers are just like, uh, I the, just wanted to tell the grandkids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're just dumbfounded because like they're, they're, seeing, they're seeing orbs shatter, they're <laughs> seeing bodies disappear. And then Coop walks over to the body and puts the ring from Firewalk With Me on his finger and Dalva Cooper disappears. Yes. That's the end of Dalva Cooper. He's gone. Yes. Good riddance. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then Cole and Rosenfield and Tanny, all of them, walk in. Yep. Everybody just comes in. It's a big reunion. It's amazing. And what's weird is while this is going on, there's just this shot, this close-up of Cooper's face. Yeah, he's just in frame the yeah. entire time, just kind of faded out. It's as if he was fading out, and they never quite faded out completely. Yeah. He's just still there. Yeah, and it's during this big reunion scene of, like, you know, Coop finally seeing Cole again, just them being all happy. Yeah. All this great stuff. But it, but because his face is there, and it's just his, it's a totally blank face, yeah. like he's he's completely stunned. Yeah. A and it adds this really sort of dark tone to the whole scene. Even though the things that are happening are really happy and everybody's yeah. happy to see each other, it's got this dark, dreamlike feeling. Yeah. And um, then the no eye lady walks over to him, yeah. and then her face starts crumbling, like what happened to like Diane in the lodge and what happened to Dougie in the lodge. Yeah. It starts crumbling, the little, little black fire smoke comes up. And then it turns into Diane. Yeah, Diane's here. So and I guess she was Diane this whole time. Yeah. Diane then kisses Cooper, yeah. and they have a little moment yeah. while everybody else is watching, and, and yeah. the Mitchum and brothers are just like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then after they stop kissing, like, Diane just realizes, like, that's Coop. And she just yeah. goes, Cooper. And it's, like, so wonderful. Unmistakable. And Cooper's like, do you remember everything? And she's like, I do. And then just that weird close-up shot of Doppel Cooper finally speaks and goes, we live inside the dreams. Yeah. And as that's happening, Bobby runs in to see what's going on. So everybody's just converging in here. And basically, Cooper kind of explains a little bit about Major Briggs and how he knew all this was going to happen. And he walks over to Truman and goes, Do you have the keys to my room at the Great Northern? He hands him the uh, keys. And then all of a sudden, it just kind of a weird like fade. It just is all black. And you see uh, Cooper, Diane, and Cole just walking and you find out that they're in the basement of the Great Northern, and you hear that like humming sound, yeah. the sound that uh, James discovered uh, a few episodes back. And they walk over to this door that's just in the corner, and he uses the key and unlocks it. Mm -hmm. And he walks in by himself. Yes, he tells the other two to stay behind. Yeah. And he goes in, and this leads him to the area where Philip Jeffries is. Yeah, the same like weird kind of forced to kind of like walk away into the room. Except he's led in by the one-armed man. Yes. Who is not speaking backwards. No. He's speaking normally. Yeah, and he gives the whole fire walk with me speech mm -hmm. again, which is great. It's yeah. classic. Love it. And Cooper goes and talks to Philip Jeffries. Yeah. And you know, they're reading just to each other, and you know, uh, Philip Jeffries is like, oh, it's good to see you again, Coop. Yeah. And then, you know, because he's like a weird kind of 
teapot type of thing. I don't know yeah. how you want to say it. <laughs> um, I'll, teapot. I don't know. But the um, but also in the the symbol from the ring from Fire Walk with Me comes out, and Phil Jeffrey says something like, "This is what you're looking for," and the symbol kind of breaks apart and turns into an eight, and he goes to Cooper, "You can enter now." Yeah. And so Coop enters, and all of a sudden we cut to Fire Walk With Me. Yes. And it's the scene, it's the last time that James ever saw uh, Laura Palmer. Instead of hosting with them on the bike together, meeting up in like the forest and everything. And we get a shot of Ray Wise looking out the window. Yeah. So he's in the episode. Yeah, there you go. Everybody has a little appearance. And then you see Cooper is in the woods watching this play out. He's in like the background kind of watching this happen. And then you start, you kind of see what they're going for. It's really weird and really cool. So James and Laura have this scene, and basically it plays out the entire scene. It's not just like a little snippet of it. It's the entire scene, just like every once in a while, cutting back to Cooper's reaction shots. Cooper, so. Cooper's watching, and we yeah. also get, of course, the shot of Laura seeing something in the woods. Now yeah. we know she saw Cooper. Yeah. And she screams. So that, cool. That, yeah, it, it's, it's crazy that that's what she saw in the woods. Yeah. Um, it, it's hard to, to say whether that's what was intended all these years. I, no, I, I don't know. I, I don't think that that was, but it's it's cool that that's the explanation. But the thing is, it's Twin Peaks, so it almost feels like it was. In a way. <laughs> exactly. And so, you know, they part ways, and all of a sudden you cut to uh, Laura, just like in the woods, she's walking to meet up with Leo and Jacques Renault and all them. You get to see Leo. Yeah, we see Leo. There's and, his appearance in the season. I know, so that's like... That's a thing. <laughs> yeah. And she's in the forest, and she looks up and she sees Cooper. Mm -hmm. And we get what is new footage of Cooper, you know, putting out his hand, extending it to Laura, and Laura saying stuff like, I've seen you before in my dreams. Yeah. And they come together, and he starts leading her away. And it's just really cool that it's actually Cheryl Lee in, yeah. in the scene with him. And it... I mean, they obviously had to have it in, in a dark scene. It works well, because it, yeah. it, it's meant... To be in a dark lit scene, yeah, you can't really see her that well. She's kind of far off in frame, so you she she looks well enough and the to way be her age in that scene. Yeah, and the way the scene kind of starts out in black and white and slowly kind of fades the color yeah. and everything. Like it, it's so well done to make this footage mesh together like brilliantly, yeah, and not make it feel like obvious new footage. Mm -hmm. Like it all kind of flows somehow. The way it was shot, the way it was like composed and everything. I, we all we were, we were talking about the entire time of how like brilliant it was like. They didn't have to do like new technology and CGI her face to make her look young. There probably yeah. was some digital enhancements, a little bit probably, but it wasn't like they didn't have to fully recreate her face to like, give exactly. it away. David Lynch knows it's, how to compose the shot to where it's It's just about work. doing it subtly. You yeah. know, you don't have to draw attention to it. Just yeah. Just kind of make us feel like we're there. Yeah, and, and so it was handled very well. Yeah, it, it was. It, it's one of those things where I feel if somebody were to just start watching the show not knowing how big a time gap there was in between yeah. how, when it was shot, they wouldn't really notice that she's so much yeah. older. Or if someone just came into the show never seeing the original and just watching it as it is, they'll think, well, except for the footage of James, they'll think that like this was shot almost today and just flows together. Yeah, it's crazy that they were able to do it. And then it cuts to a sh the shot of her body wrapped in the plastic on the shoreline, yeah. but the body disappears. Yes. And... Then we get to see footage that makes me just f feel things yeah. <laughs> when, yeah. when we see Jack Nance. Because I, I love Jack Nance. His yeah. character was always one of my favorites from the series. Yeah. So you see Pete um, and you see Josie yeah. there. It's like the opening of the first episode of the show where it's like him saying, I'm going to go out fishing. She's dead. Yeah, <laughs> it's that. And he leaves the house to go fishing, but he doesn't discover a body because there's no body there. So you see him just like walk past the spot where her body was. Go to the edge of the pier, just throw his fishing line in, and just fish. She just goes fishing. Yeah. And That's... you're just like, so they just undid everything. It never happened. Though. Never happened. But then it cuts to modern day, yeah. and you see uh, Sarah Palmer in her house. First off, you don't see anybody. You just see her like family room area. And all you hear is this weird noises and stuff. You hear her screaming. And all of a sudden, she comes into frame, picks up the picture of uh, Laura Palmer, the classic prom photo, throws it on the ground and just starts stabbing at it with the bottle. Yeah. And just and starts it's... breaking and it starts to, everything's getting all weirdly, like, shifty, like, rewinding forward and everything's, like, crazy. And then it cuts back to Cooper leading Laura away, and then he turns and she's not there. And she goes off with, like, a scream. Yeah. That iconic, like, she's the best screamer in yeah. the film. It's crazy. Yeah. So now, what happened to her? <laughs> and that's how the episode ends. That's where it ends. Um, 
Holy fuck. <laughs> wow. Just yeah. What, what a what a wild ride. And actually, while we're filming this video, we haven't seen episode 18 yet. No. So we don't know where this goes. No. Yeah, we decided to do this before watching the next episode. Yeah. I can't wait to just go yeah. and watch it. Yeah, this episode, like, the ending of this episode took a completely different turn than I was expecting. Yeah. Like, the stuff at the beginning with them defeating Dapple Cooper, I saw it coming, you knew that was gonna happen. Yes. But all of a sudden, they're back in Fire Walk with me, and it's like, what? Yeah, it, it, it really... David Lynch has a way of, of really subverting your expectations. Yeah, like you, very you much. have no idea where he's gonna go with anything. Who would thought Lucy would be the one to kill Dapple Cooper? Yeah, <laughs> it's just... What? It's just ridiculous, yes. but it works so well. It does. It works so well. It's so great. And it, and it works in a way where it's not like, it's not like he's going back to this footage of Fire Walk with me for like nostalgic reasons yeah. or anything like that. It, it works into the story perfectly. Yeah, it actually feels like plot progression. Yeah. <laughs> Even though we're literally just watching a whole scene from Fire Walk with me just play yeah. out. Yeah, a good like 15 minutes of the episode was stock footage. Basically, <laughs> yeah. From a previous film, but it makes sense. Somehow, yeah. yeah. So uh, I loved this episode. Oh, me I, too. I thought it was one of the best episodes of the season. Yeah, it was one of the episodes where like so much happened in, in it that it actually felt long, not in a bad way, Yeah. but it actually felt like so much happened that I'm like, did we just actually watch both episodes together? Because <laughs> yeah. so much happened here. It, it was crazy. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't even know what to expect with episode No, 18. and that's the one thing is that you think you know what you're going to expect with the last two episodes, but this one just ends on a way where it's like, how is this last episode going to play out? Yeah. Like, I have no clue where they're going to go with that, with the finale. So yeah, we will find out very, very soon. Yes. And until then, we will see you guys later.